Hi, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rechak, Wadash. Double honor to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. And as always, peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful way like Tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the earth. Now, I'm just responding to this video right here. This, uh, don't know who he is, but he calls himself the false doctrine destroyer. And um, he's responding to um, that um, that Tommy G uh, documentary on the ISU PK, where uh, Tazaryak was telling them that uh, if you're not an Israelite, if you of another nation, then you can't join us. And uh, I wonder if he, you know, if this dude gets his inspiration from guys like Vocab because he's going to make the same era and usage of a law that most of them get wrong so let me uh play it real quick we just touched on this not even a week ago <laughs> and here here come jake all right gotta save the heathen right but let's uh listen real quick um, my mom white. could be a beautiful black queen but if my dad's white i'm out that's right i'm gonna need your help As y'all heard, y'all heard what he said. I mean, that's clear. And I, I didn't agree with him when he used the example of Bob Marley because, you know, we believe that, you know, he was a Jake. You know, just his spirit, his aura, you know, the, the flavor that he had. You know, he was he had to have been a Jake just because a person looked like a so-called white person. That doesn't mean that that's who they actually are because the seed have been scattered and mingled among all nations you know and all it takes is just maybe one generation to uh you know change your genetic appearance you know but uh anyway um but if you if, if your father is a so-called uh actual edomite so-called white person and but your mother happened to be a so-called black woman a puerto rican woman or whatever she's you know she's of the nation then uh that child is what you would call a bastard a mamzer okay because you are what you are according to your fathers because you are this you 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 come from the seed of your father you know and i'm pretty sure that uh those of you listening I, you already know that and i don't need to go to the law to to, to prove it but uh let's continue he told the man you know what i'm saying that um with him being white, he cannot follow our way of life. Basically put his foot in his mouth. Because we already know that the stranger going to soldier with us. Let's get to these 10 easy scriptures. Now, then we just deal with this. We just dealt with this topic. You know, <clears throat> and Jake is hard bent on saving everybody but they self. It's, it's a sad case. This is why the majority of them is not going to make it. They're willing to, to, you know, savage their own salvation to save others. You know, these other nations, they don't they don't uh, break their necks. They don't go out of their way to try to uh, save you. You know. At best, they'll just tell you you're a Gentile and, uh, you know, believe Jesus. You know, they'll put that white meat on you. But they're not going to tell you who you are. And, and and who your God is and how you serve him because they they themselves can't serve the Heavenly Father. They don't know how. All right. The Lord uh seek of such worshipers to worship him, them that 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 worship him in spirit and in truth. <clears throat> All right, and um according to the law, uh a bastard, you know, a a, a, a Moabite, an Ammonite. You know, basically any, any heathen, they would not be able to be partakers in our um in our tabernacle. All right, they would they would not be able to enter into the congregation. Read Deuteronomy the twenty third chapter. Now, were some of the neighboring nations like the Egyptians? And so on and so forth for we to be diplomatic with them well yeah because we we did dwell as strangers in their land but that didn't mean that 
they were allowed to come and, and, and partake in an in inheritance with us. The law never stated such. But uh, let, let's let's you know, let's get into it. And I'm I'm gonna try to be quick. I'm gonna try to you know make this quick. The first one, Leviticus 19, verse 34. The stranger who sojourns with you shall be unto you as one of your citizens, and you shall love him as yourself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You heard that, Tazariat? So there's another one. He So he's uh, misusing the law in Leviticus 19, the same exact uh, law, the same exact scripture that vocab Haman Malone misuses. Um, the Feast of Pentecost. When you read Acts, the second chapter, the, it was the first display of the Holy Spirit by the, uh, the apostles. When they started speaking in these different languages, they saw all these Jews coming down from all these different parts of the world for the feast. Um, that That's an example of that. Because they had to come, you know, according to the law, three times out of the year, all males are to report to Jerusalem to worship, to sacrifice. So if you was coming from Mesopotamia, if you was coming from Crete, if you was coming from uh, uh, Rome, if you was coming from Arabia, and you came down to Jerusalem because you knew what the law said because you were an Israelite, but you happen to be living outside of the jurisdiction of Judea. When you came back to Jerusalem, you were sojourning. The Jews that were already living in the land, they had to treat you like you was a brother that's native to that land. What part of that don't you understand? That's not talking about an actual outsider, a, a heathen. The heathens had no part in what we had going. They were not allowed to, to, to worship. They couldn't come to the, uh, the, the, the temple. There was a point in time where they couldn't even help us build the wall of the temple. But yet they're going to come to our feast. Stop it, my man. Jake is wise according to their own conceit, but they, but they have not a clue. They have a zeal of the most high, but not according to knowledge. It's a stranger too in the land, Egypt. Let's get to number two. The second scripture that's going to bump what you said. Leviticus 23, verse 42. You shall have one law for the stranger and one from your midst. For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim. The third scripture to Zariat that cut up. He a different kind of Israelite. He definitely not from uh, the one West, you know. And see, Volk, th this type of Israelite, he's not on Vocab's radar. Right? He, he wouldn't have nothing to say about this type of Israelite right here. All right. He, 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 would, he would be the least concerned for Vocab. That's why he won't focus on these other Israelites. He's only focused on the one West Israelite groups. Cause they know we had we actually have the truth. All right, this dude right here is definitely not a threat. So he's gonna get all these stranger scriptures. I'm sure throughout this video, he's not gonna try to go into the Hebrew to get context on which stranger that's talking about. I'm very very confident that the, the uh, these particular strangers you go into the actual text in the hebrew you'll see that the word is gar which is the, always the word usage when it's implying an israelite foreigner that's coming back into the land to sojourn that's gar like when moses when he 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 had that um he had a son with with the uh the, the medianite uh woman he what did he name his son 
Gershom. Because he had him in a strange land. That was a Levite child. What you say? Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 16. Behold, we depart from Horeb, and we went through the great and terrible wilderness, and the children of the stranger which live in the land we saw. That was just all dealing with Israelites. All dealing with Israelites. So I don't I don't I don't see where he's getting that uh <laughs> that we're wrong or you know to to Zoyak, for example. All right. <clears throat> I never thought I'd see myself like <laughs> cuz I don't I don't rock with Zoyak at all, man. And he was even, you know, we got on them even for this uh particular documentary that was put out. They 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 make their ministry look real foolish, you know. But uh you 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 come out there and you trying to uh, misrepresent the scriptures, you know whether you're an Israelite or a Christian or whoever, we we got to jump on it. All right, we got to correct it. And this dude, he's 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 wrong, but he's, you know, he's very confident. The third scripture is already at that cut up what you said, <laughs> and we finna keep going. So the fourth scripture that cut up what you said. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 19. Therefore, love the stranger, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. So he just did a word search and put in stranger and just came up with all these precepts without really understanding the context. So real quick, I want to go to a, uh, a parable of Yahawashai. And which this actually coincides with the law on how to deal with a stranger. Because we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves, correct? That's talking about your brother, your fellow Israelite brother, whether he's a stranger or whether he was born in a land. You, you're supposed to bestow upon him the same love. Don't treat him different because he lives on the outside. They don't. They just can't seem to understand that. Uh, let's go to Luke, uh, Luke 10. This is a Luke 10 and 30 dealing with the Good Samaritan. Now, I know a lot of people interpret this because it, it's talking about a Good Samaritan, right? Well, there was uh, the, the, the Jew or the, the Israelites were captured and, and took, uh, brought out of uh, Samaria. So, you know, this has to be talking about a non-Israelite. You know, that woman at the uh the woman at the the well was a Samaritan woman. And then they'll try to use her as an example of uh salvation being granted unto to a a, a non-Israelite. No, she she was a heathen. All right. And it was a reason why the Lord was talking to her the way he did. But there were, if you actually knew your history and you know the scriptures, there were remnants of Israelites in Sumeria. But the 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 um the preaching the preaching of the gospel the message had to begin in Judea first because there is in the in the prophets it says that the the tents of Judah shall be saved first so that's who the Lord went to first the ministry began with the preaching to the circumcision those that were in Judea then the Lord made his rounds elsewhere. So the Lord uses this uh, parable about showing love to a stranger. Luke 10 and 30 and 30, it says, And Yahweh Shai answered, said, answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. So some, some criminals... You know, some uh, some thug niggas, you know, they, they saw him and they, they, you know, stripped him out of his clothes and and, and, and beat him and, and, and left him wounded. Right. Left him from dead for dead. 
And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So he didn't have, this priest didn't have no compassion for, for the brother that he saw, you know, slumped in, 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 a, in a street. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. You know, no help. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an, to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that shewed mercy on him. Then said Yahweh Shai unto him, Go and do thou likewise. All right. <clears throat> so the one who actually uh, did a righteous deed and kept the law. It was the the the, the stranger, the, the the Samaritan. Okay. So <clears throat> that's when you go back to the law. That's what that's talking about. All right. When you you uh, take a stranger in and you show hospitality and and and, and compassion for him. Let me uh. Leviticus 19, 34. I want to get the other one. Here it is. Deuteronomy 10 and uh, 18. It says, He do execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow and love the stranger and giving him food and raiment. And that's what that uh, good Samaritan did. All right. <clears throat> you know, this this is in our law. Love you, therefore, the stranger for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. All right. Deuteronomy 24 and 14. Thou shalt not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. That will be an, a, a hired Israelite servant, whether whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. See what a heathen, a non-Israelite. You could take him to be a bondman or a bond, or her a bondmaid. But for an Israelite, you hire him as a servant. So that's how you know that that's talking about an Israelite. So this particular Israelite, he could be a, a, among your brothers where you dwell, or he can be a stranger, somebody that's out, on the, that lives on the outside. All right, would he happen to be in your land within your gates? So we all get the same treatment because we all are, are, are brother, brethren. And, and don't try to use that argument. Oh, well, but the Samaritans, they were not Israelites. You had remnants of Israelites that were actually in Samaria. When when um when Gad Gadaliah was killed, you had certain uh Jews or Israelites that came from down that way to to, to mourn. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah 41. Jeremiah 41. And one, it says, and now it, now it came to pass. Um, let me go to the NLT on this. It says, but in Madaton, uh, Ishmael, son of Netaniah, and grandson of Elishama, who was a member of the royal family and had been one of the king's highest officials, went to Mitz Mitzpah with 10 men to meet Gedaliah while they were eating together. Ishmael and his 10 men suddenly jumped up and drew their swords and killed Gedaliah, whom the king of Babylon had appointed governor. Ishmael also killed all the Judeans and the Babylonian soldiers who were with Gedaliah at Mitzpah. The next day, before anyone had heard about Gedaliah's murder, <clears throat> Eighty men arrived from Shechem, Shiloh, 
and Samaria to worship at the temple of the Lord. So you still had remnants of Israelites in Samaria. This is uh, after, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of those Israelites were captured. All right, in, in Samaria and, and, and took to Assyria. Okay. So I just want to go to that just to show and prove that there were still Israelites in Samaria. Okay. So anyway, um, like I said, I was going to make this quick. But this dude, he, he really think he, he's, he's, he think he's correct. But you in error, my, my friend. Repent. Which, you know, he's 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 not even uh, a one Western, man. So I, I don't know. I, you fall into one of them other groups, man, them unknown groups. It's going to be real hard, you know, for him to, to, to break out of that. But we'll, we'll see if he watches this video. But you, you, you wrong. Okay. A stranger, if you given a, a good treatment to a stranger, that would have, have been an Israelite, an Israelite neighbor. So I'm going to end it right there. I'm going to give all praise to y'all. Shalom.